Hello, my name is Krzysztof Opasiak. Hello, my name is Aleksander Mazuruk. And today we'd like to share with you our story about our bumpy ride of, around uh, container license compliance. So the schedule for today, first of all, we would like to introduce the environment in which we are dealing with this problem, what we have tried, what didn't work, uh, what we have now, and where are we going in the nearest future. So first of all, a disclaimer, neither of us is a lawyer. If you need a comprehensive guideline to license compliance in Docker or in general, please ask your lawyer to provide you one. This presentation cannot be viewed as such a guideline. So first of all, the problem statement. Usually when people talk about the license compliance, they are thinking about corporate environments. But here we are dealing with the license compliance in the open source project called ONA. You probably heard about it as it's a center of gravity for 5G network. But for the purpose of this talk, we are not going to focus on the functional side of ONAP, but rather the technical. So ONAP, from the perspective of the license compliance, are a few hundred Git repos in Java, Python, and few other languages. They build into over a hundred Docker containers which are hosted on our own Nexus instance that is publicly available. And ONAP can be deployed using single click, click deployment thanks to Helm. So what was in place when we started our journey? So first of all, we had an automated Docker release process that was prepared by LFIT and that worked fine for most of the PTLs. So we need to not destroy that one. All the heavy lifting about this around this process and the unit testing in general is being done by our Jenkins instance. We also use Sonar to find some issues in our source code. And we have also periodic uh, license scan of our Git repos to catch all the license issues that appear in our source code. Finally, we have also the base images provided by the integration team. Unfortunately, as the initial research showed, they've been not used by many of our sub-projects. So how did it all start? Uh, I just mentioned a few seconds ago that we had a periodic scans uh, of our source code to look for license issues. And after one of those scans, one of the a few community members started asking a few questions to Steve Winslow from the Linux Foundation who provided a great support uh, regarding the license compliance for us. So the questions were, hey, we are putting so much effort to make sure that our source code is clean, but really number of our users do not even see our source code because they are deploying our Docker containers. So how about them? How about all the databases that we deploy as a part of ONAP? And few other questions which resulted in a quite a long discussion on a mailing list. So final clarification came from the article that was shared by, with us by Steve Winslow. That's a really great position that I recommend anyone who is dealing with uh, Docker containers to, to read. So if you are unable to read it uh, now or in the future, here is the uh, most important outcome from the article. So first of all, if you are making something publicly available, it means that you're distributing it. The same applies to source code and the same applies to Docker containers. So depending on what you distribute, the compliance process has different complexity. If you are distributing source code, you need to make sure that it is clean. If you are distributing a Docker file, then it's treated the same way as source code. So you need to make sure that you are, for example, not copy pasting fragments that, that are coming from incompatible uh, licenses. But if you are distributing a Docker image, then it means that you are responsible not only for the stuff that you added to the image, but for everything that is inside. It includes also the base image that you use to produce your final Docker. So you need to ensure license compliance, not for only for your code for your binaries that you put in the image but for all the packages that are there and you need to make and you need to ensure that 
for each and every layer of the image. So even if you remove some packages in, in one layer and they are present in the previous one, you still need to make sure that you have a license compliance for them because every layer is available to the end user. So at that point, we realized that we really need an automated license compliance. But even before we start our work on automating that, we really need to think how to shrink our images. As I mentioned, we have more than 100 Docker images and number of them con contain a few hundred packages. And many of those were also GPLv3, which community decided to remove from ONA because it's not being uh, loved by multiple companies. So we really need to shrink our images, reduce the number of packages that we have, uh, that we have to care about, and we need to automate as much as possible. And we need to ensure that the compliance is being done really for every layer that we have, not only for the top one. Unfortunately, we faced a few challenges. Uh, the most important is that Docker, Docker in general, uh, Docker images obviously, are not really friendly for any kind of introspection. So it's really often that we need to execute additional steps in order to collect all the necessary data about uh, content of our Dockers. So what was missing, what, what we needed at that point? First of all, we need to really know what we have inside our Dockers. So we need to generate the software bill of materials uh, with all the data required to perform uh, compliance report. We need also policies in order to be able to monitor different categories of licenses because some licenses are compatible with each other, some are not, some are prohibited by the community, some are blessed. So we also need to integrate that with existing CIs. We don't want yet another system because we already have two that people need to care about. So we want to um, make sure that the amount of work that we create for the community is minimal. We also need to integrate that with our existing image release process because we want to provide the feedback for the developer even before the image is available in Nexus. Some other considerations that, that we had in our design phase is that we want to really automate as much as possible. As I mentioned, ONAP <coughs> is not about the license compliance, it's about orchestrating VNFs, CNFs, and, and all the other uh, stuff. So we prefer also the open source solution. ONAP is open source. We also want to, our tooling to be open source, just to make sure that we are uh, able to extend the mechanisms that we are using. Uh, as Krzysztof has mentioned, uh, first of all, we need an SBOM. So I want to look for a tool that would generate such. Uh, we found Tern, which could analyze Docker containers out of the box. It is a CLI app that takes a container image or a Docker file and generates an SPM for it. It's pluggable and has upstream support for Scanful Toolkit. On itself, it supports only packages, uh, but Scanful Toolkit can be used to extend both package metadata and to scan files. Turn on itself will uh, be as precise as metadata that are reported by package managers, which it queries. Turn gave us uh, the ability to easily show people what's in the containers they build and what licenses uh, the components uh, in those images have, which is why we integrated Turn into weekly CI chain with more than we shown. But we wanted to provide feedback sooner uh, the best case scenario would be in Garrett, uh, which Tern couldn't give us. So uh, we want to give uh, developers feedback as soon as possible. So we need a tool that we can run on public CI chains. And Tern works by mounting layer by layer via overlay FS, truthing and querying package managers for info on licenses and copyrights. This means that someone could uh, push something that we don't want executed in such environment, mask it at uh, package manager, and possibly infect our machines. Uh, Tern also requires Docker swap access and some extra privileges on older kernels without overlay FS support in user space. 
overlay fs and docker did fail quite often so each week we had a bunch of dockers that failed to scan there might still be okay for people uh, where they develop closed source solutions or have a restricted push access but it didn't work for us so we had to switch to another tool that emerged in the meantime so what we are switching to the tool uh, of our choice is Scancode.io, uh, which is a Django-based wrapper around Scancode Toolkit, extending and specializing its features. Obviously, it has REST API and Web GUI being Django-based, but there's also CLI. Another factor that uh, prompted us to switch is that NextB, authors of the tool and Scancode Toolkit, have a lot of supporting libraries for software composition analysis and related stuff like package code for handling stuff related to packages or fetch code for, you get the idea. Scancode.io is also easily extendable and customizable due to usage of concepts of pipe and pipelines. And we did need some extensions, especially given the challenges that the Alpine Linux has given us. Alpine Linux has really small footprint, while well, having typical OS stuff like package manager, so you can just do APK add all your dependencies and uh, run whatever software you need there. And the cherry on top of that was that the base image is GPLv3 free, uh, as Alpine uses Moodle and Busybox. But it's not all okay cake as the Alpine packages don't have sufficient information needed for license compliance. For example, there is no copyright info which is required by almost every open source license. We only get license identifiers. And those are easy to get wrong, like with PSD, uh, which was PSD zero close, one close. Uh, it had some iterations. Uh, there are also projects that take a license uh, and add something to it and it might be marked as the original license without the additional stipulation that might be important in terms of license compliance. Luckily, it doesn't mean that there is no way to gather that info, which is what we set out to do. So what we do is we download the Alpine's upwards repo which holds build recipes for all the packages, check it out on the comment related to the package version in question, parse the build recipe, download source code, analyze it with scan code toolkit to get all the missing information. This is not a perfect approach as there are many sub packages in Alpine. Sub packages share code repo and version with their parent packages, but use only a subset uh, of what's in that code. This means that if we the repository includes some GPLv3 code, it will uh, be uh, marked as including GPLv3. Until we add support for parse, parsing makes, cmakes, uh, and limiting the source code scan, uh, that's what we get. Nevertheless, it significantly improves Alpine scanning results, and it would not be possible without Philip uh, Omhedan and Mateusz Pertz. Thanks, guys. So, where are we going with this? We still are missing a few features uh, that uh, we need in ONAP. The first thing is uh, a way to visualize inter Docker dependencies. We have so many Dockers in ONAP. Uh, and it's hard to control what baseline images are used. Uh, in ONAP integration, we are maintaining two GPLv3 uh, base images with Java 11 and Python 3, uh, which we're trying to popularize. I've been checking from time to time the status of utilization of those images using DocBiz, which creates a dependency dot graph of all layers in images used by a Docker instance. Those graphs are hard to read and are huge. As you can see, this bar at the bottom of this slide, this is limited uh, graph of uh, ONAP uh, dockers. So we are currently developing additional pipeline for ScanCode.io that would do what DocVis does, but without Docker soft access and present it in more readable manner 
possibly in, in web GUI. Another thing that we uh, want to add is uh, support for uh, waivers, uh, which would complement uh, policies that Skankled has. Uh, policies currently support only code-based resources uh, and allow classifying licenses as approved, restricted, or prohibited. We will need for policies to also support packages and we will need support for waivers. Uh, in ONAP, we keep waivers in a, a Git controlled repo that we would like to check against and uh, mark the projects with waivers as uh, that use a restricted license uh, as okay because they do have a waiver for that. Another thing is Gary integration. As I mentioned, the automated Docker release process is happening via submitting a change to Gary. So this is really the place where we have a developer attention. So it's also the best place to provide feedback regarding all the license issues that can be found in the image that he or she is currently creating. So to achieve that, we want to integrate Skankled.io and trigger it from Jenkins uh, from the job that is actually being executed for every new Docker release. Another thing is the generation of the final compliance report. So when we know what's really inside our Dockers, uh, we want to collect all the sources in places where we need to uh, make sure that the source code for packages is available, if license requires that and you like to create you know, a proper uh, compliance report which can be used by people to um, present that to their legal departments or to see uh, what's really inside our own app and which pieces of software are being actually included into our package. So just to sum up our presentations and the lessons that we learned during our work, so first of all, we believe that choosing the right distribution for your containers is really crucial for the license compliance. And that's because if you are using a full uh, distribution image like Ubuntu or Debian or anything like that, you may end up having to execute the compliance process for hundreds of packages that are there. And that's a huge piece of unnecessary work that has to be performed there. And then it's also a great idea to share the base image among your sub-projects. That can really narrow the list of packages that, that you are dealing with and make sure that everyone is up to date with the current security fixes. From our perspective, there seems to be no silver bullet, at least for now, in terms of Docker compliance process. Even the commercial tools that are there on the market they, they really do less than you would expect them to do. And obviously we are not going to name here any tools just to not make good or bad PR. Uh, we are open source people, so we are always looking for uh, people with similar interests to collaborate and to create open source tooling for uh, Docker com compliance. So now the question for you, do you have Docker compliance process in your project provided that you're shipping Docker containers. If not, then maybe it's a good opportunity to get in contact and start collaborating so that we can share the workload and make sure that we may all benefit from the same solution in the community. Thank you. Thank you.